Not a lot is known about Luca Magnotta's past. In fact, the majority is the media's propaganda. The story of Luca Magnotta's ex, fiance, Ron Mikhailov, and their love affair remains widely unknown and untold until today. This is the true backstory. Luca Magnotta was Toronto's top male expensive escort for entertaining the rich, famous, and powerful for years. Luca was very busy traveling the world, living a jet-set first-class life. In 2008, Luca returned from New York City, where he was living, to once again work at his home city of Toronto. Luca was living at the Leaside Towers in his luxury penthouse. Ron Mikhailov, a young financer, was working in the financial trading buildings of Bay Street, very successful and ambitious. He was an extremely handsome Russian Israeli. He also enjoyed using the services of escorts and was very discreet about his bisexuality, which is not shameful. It's reality. Bisexuality was more taboo back then, but now it's 2020 and it shouldn't be taboo any longer. Ron also worked alongside Andrea Ashivo. Jorkin, Luca's aunt, who was mysteriously killed a few years later. One night, Luca received a call to meet a client at the luxury Toronto Sheridan Hotel. Luca almost didn't take the call since he was super busy. But that night, he was delighted to see a handsome young professional. Ron and Luca had a romantic candlelit evening full of champagne and passion. It was clear the evening was more than a one-night stand. It was the beginning of a whirlwind love affair. After Ron and Luca departed their hotel, they were on the phone talking all night. The two young men were inseparable in the purest form of love, and white-hot passion was happening. It was a modern-day version of Romeo and Juliet. Ron was very nice and young man, but he was also a very troubled individual. He was born in Israel and immigrated to Canada at a very young age. Ron was involved heav heavily with the Toronto Ro Russian Mafia. I'm not specifying anything in any of the crimes he committed. But Luca was aware and witnessed a lot. If you watch the television program Sopranos, you will understand precisely the life Luca lived for over two years. Luca and Ron were very similar to the Sopranos characters, Christopher and Adriana. Luca was always receiving lavish, expensive gifts from Ron Mikhailov. Boxes and boxes of expensive designer perfumes like Dolce & Gabbana, Dior, Chanel any other designer cologne that you can imagine. An unlimited supply of Versace clothing, shoes, and accessories, beautiful jewelry, rings, bracelets, necklaces. Luca was treated like a modern day prince. At first, Ron was whining and dining Luca constantly. They were at Toronto's finest restaurants every night, movie theaters, and lavish shopping sprees. Ron was comfortable around Luca because Luca never judged Ron. Luca ex accepted Ron for who he was. Ron was very tortured by his sexuality. Ron and Luca would go to the gay clubs three to four times per week and dance the night away. Ron never revealed his secret gay side to his friends or family. He felt too tortured and feared they wouldn't look at him the same again. They wouldn't truly like him for who he really was, so he was forced to live a lie. In the Russian community, homosexuality is seen as demasculating and forbidden. People still continue to put all homosexuals in the same category. In most people's eyes, gays are seen as flamboyant, fairies, or just men that act very feminine. This stereotype is very offensive and is very outdated and untrue. Most gay men are very masculine acting and even more masculine than some of the straight guys. Ron is a perfect example, very straight acting and looking. Luca and Ron were very happy 
but trouble began to arise in paradise. The couple's friends did not approve of their friendship or relationship. Their close friends thought it was more of a friendship. Everyone saw them spending all time together. Ron, within a few weeks, brought Luca a beautiful ring and proposed. It was very sudden, but the two were deeply in love. They were at Luca's downtown condo listening to Frank Sinatra's Strangers in the Night, the same song Sinatra sang for Ava Gardner when he proposed to her. Luca always cherished that song from that day forward. After becoming engaged, certain responsibilities and expectations must be met, especially commitment. Luca wanted, rightfully so, to be a part of Ron and Ron, his fiancé's life, to meet his family and friends, and to have a romantic life. Ron was very adamant that he was closeted and Luca was to remain his little secret. Luca agreed, but only for a short period of time. Ron needed a cover. He needed a woman to present to his family, since they were becoming very suspicious. They recruited Luca's sister, Melissa, and made her come along with them to parties, birthdays, family events, nightclubs, anytime Ron needed a woman date. Ron's friends loved Melissa. However, Luca was along everywhere, too, and becoming furious with the charade. Ron could not continue doing this to Luca. It was unacceptable. On top of the charade, Ron was a sexaholic. He needed sex daily with as many different partners as possible. Luca found Ron an endless supply of lovers. Men, Luca treated Ron like a god, a king. Luca would pick up, Luca would pick up and run from work daily, and return to the condo and invite men over for threesomes and porn tapings. Luca and Ron loved to drive around Toronto picking up young cute guys for Ron's pleasure. Accusations occurred that Luca would drug all these guys so that they could violate the unconscious men. But that was untrue. It was all consensual. Ron enjoyed very rough sex and Luca was obligated to give Ron whatever he wanted. Sex and other men. Ron and Luca did over over half a half year did a few thousand different men and a few women together too. Luca was completely okay with all this, except Luca had one condition. Luca needed Ron to disclose and be honest about any men Ron would be with. Ron promised to never go behind Luca's back. Of course, Ron lied pathologically and would cheat on Luca, even though there was no need. Luca gave him all the permission he wanted to have sex with other men. Luca would even have men ready as presents for Ron, nude and on the bed waiting for Ron after he returned from his financial trading job. Ron really wanted Luca's brother, but Luca was becoming very jealous that Ron was paying more attention to Luca's brother than he was to Luca. Ron was constantly in both bathhouses sex parties, and clubs. Luca was wishing for a more normal life. Ron was kept in a t on a tight leash by his family and not permitted to spend the night away from his domineering mother. Ron and his mother even shared the same bed. Luca had enough and gave Ron an ultimatum. Either include Luca in Ron's life and come out of the closet, or Luca would leave forever. It's either all or nothing. Luca went to Russia for a week, and when he returned, Ron reluctantly came out of the closet to his menacing sister, Rena, who was always bossing Ron around and controlling his life. Rena became infuriated, and she threatened Luca and warned him to stay away from Ron forever. Luca laughed. Ron was a grown man, and they were engaged. Fuck her. The Russian Mafia began following Luca, vandalizing Luca's SUV, and threatening notes appeared. The useless, worthless police did nothing. The relationship turned toxic, and dark clouds began to arise. Luca and Ron had movie marathons and even bought a cute dog named Max. But Ron could never be satisfied. His sexuality always stood in the way. 
Buko rented an apartment in northern Toronto, a place to bring clients, but also a secret meeting place for him and Ron to be closer. Ron's friends began to be more and more suspicious. Luca was getting more and more involved with the Toronto Russian mafia and the underworld of the city. It was getting very dangerous. Luca's manager, John McKellar, became involved, and so did Luca's ex, Nader. Luca's friends outed Ron without Luca's knowledge. Ron's friends began to become aware of Ron's homosexuality, and things became very dangerous. Ron went to the police because people were harassing him. Luca was suddenly being blamed for all of Ron's problems. The Toronto Russian Mafia framed Luca and set Ron and Luca up to fail. They wanted to ruin the engagement and stop the marriage. Luca was constantly being threatened and harassed, so he moved frequently. Luca lived at the Leaside Towers, 95 Thorncliffe, Bruce MacArthur's old building and also at the Four Seasons Luxury Hotel. He was quickly found by the Mafia and threatened and attacked. Either Luca needed to leave town or he would be killed. The Mafia made it clear. Ron's family and friends as well as Luca's made it impossible for their relationship to succeed. Luca had issues, so did Ron, and it just didn't really work out. Luca really did love Ron and wanted to marry him. It's unfortunate the Russian Mafia interfered. Luca and Ron separated. Luca moved to Los Angeles and Ron continued in the financial trading industry in Toronto. The Mafia did force Luca to make multiple trips to Russia for business and to pay off debts. Luca completed all of his obligations. So these Mafias. And he could just sever ties. This podcast let me make clear, is not to bring down anyone. It is the truth, and people are entitled to freedom of speech. This untold story needed to be told. The Mafia lied atrociously about Luca, and his image was ruined. Everything you'll hear about Luca is 90% false news and propaganda. Luca was an extremely successful male model and escort, traveling all over to 40 different countries, and he made a very lucrative career. Luca's life was very similar to Sharon Stone's in the film Casino. Luxury, class, and glamour. A lot of Ron's friends and associates were liars, jealous, and intolerant. They stopped at nothing to force Ron into a lifestyle that they wanted. They wanted Ron to be a heterosexual relationship. They wanted Ron to be with who they thought he should be. For a few years, Luca showed Ron true happiness. Ron's friends set up Ron and set up Luca. They framed Luca and convinced Ron Luca was bad. It's a shame Ron never stood up for his fiance. Ron and Luca were truly in love. So whatever story you hear, whatever you are told, please keep in mind what you are listening to here. It is the truth. It is an important part of the story, and now it's told, whether people like it or not. Luca was also framed for murder, necrophilia, cannibalism, and serial cat killings in 2012. The Canadian government, high-ranking officials, were Luca's clients. So keep that in mind. Luca was involved in things against his will. This concludes this podcast. Now you know how the Russian Mafia framed Luka Magnata. Freedom of speech.